I I don't know. Is that an option? I I don't know where that would option be. Yeah, I'm gonna just see. Okay. I think you're you back. Yeah, you're back. I'm back live. Okay. <sighs> the stream isn't perfect apparently. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, but now it looks like we're back and we're good to go here, so get things geared up and ready to go. We're racing here as time expires. Maybe. Maybe time will expire. So it looks like our qualifying order is Seagrest, Bam Bam. SRS, Cream Media, Bodhod, RJP, Arcaca, iFunner, Rogue A Wing, Andrews Fresh, Connor Jaloft, Rum Fresh, Porridge Power, Kitten Petter, Google Doogle, HS Maria, P Dog Peyton rounds out the grid. So it'll be an interesting qualifying or uh, it was an interesting qualifying session, so we'll see how how uh, lap one turn one goes for everyone here today. Perry, I'm ready for your way too early predictions. Who do you think is going to finish this race on top? I it, I, I like Bodhod here. I like the one stop. Um, sorry for that weird noise at the start of that. <laughs> Seagrass as well, I think has a lot of pace as well. Um, with, with being about a second in front of everybody else on the soft. So I guess it's one of those wait and sees. I kind of hope Seagrass... Uh, if he does have the advantage he had last week at Italy, just takes it control under a safety car and uh, can bring it home. But I guess we'll see. I know it'll be a big deal for him. He's just been so close and hasn't been able to get it done. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I uh, I I think I think we might see we might see an outlier in this race. We might have some wild finishes. Um, maybe my my bold prediction would be maybe an. I think you know what? I think I think maybe RJP has it this week. I think he might be able to put something together and sneak out with a with a victory here this evening. And while we wait for the grid to form up, I uh, just want to remind you that you can catch our European tiers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 p.m. UK time. And our American tiers are Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Don't forget to subscribe and donate if you have the ability. Also, gift as many subs as possible. Because no one likes to watch commercials. <laughs> yes. So I'm looking at you, Arbar. Give people some subs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, looks like we've turned the clouds on. So we'll uh, lower the track temperature, I'm assuming, quite a bit from qualifying. Yeah. I'm wondering if with your telemetry, if you're able to see what our track temperatures are at all. Actually, I think I had it somewhere, and it's... Hold on. The uh, track temperature is 29 degrees Celsius, so... So a little bit cooler, but not... Not too bad. <clears throat> All right, so we're slowly making our way around the grid. I think P Dog, the only driver not to set a lap, does have his work cut out for him a little bit, but. I think I think he is a fast enough driver. He might be able to wake his way up in the first couple laps and try to get into the points. And maybe he's even got something cooking to get into the podium finish. I just saw the 
uh, graphic for I don't know about you. I saw the tire oh. graphic, which is interesting. Yeah, um, mine just came up here. Yeah, it talks about everybody on softs, but so the few people on medium, you'll have Bodhad as the leading medium runner, Andrew in ninth on the mediums, and then uh, pretty much almost everyone back past tenth: Kano, Rumfresh, Google Dougal, HS Marrera, and P Dog all on mediums. So they'll be able to go maybe about 14, I think maybe 15 as many laps in, and then end the race in softs. Uh, and then the hard runners, Porch Power, Kitten, are just going to go pretty much as long as they can, maybe try to hop on either the softs or medium well over halfway into the race. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see see what they choose to do. I'd be interesting to see if those medium runners can stretch, stretch it and then get onto the softs near the end, but I feel like they might be going onto the hards midway through, but we'll see. Alright, here we are. There's the start glitch. There we go. There we go. Lights out and, and away we lights go. Lights out and as Bam Bam gets off to a great start around the outside, and he'll take the lead into turn one. Man, a terrific start for Bam Bam. Gets by Seagrass. Oh, as we've got a spinner. It's Cream oh. Media who struck back, and luckily, that would have been a huge accident on the exit of turn two. Yeah, it was an unfortunate little coming together there for Cream Media, and. No, he's got a he's got a work cut out for him pulling his way up the field, but he'll be able to recover. Kitten Petter has been able to get a jump on things, currently up six positions. So great start for him. It's both Williams have wing damage. iPhoner's got right front. And it looks like Cream Media's got left front, so both Williams have wing damage opening lap. Oh, that's not that's not good. That's that's not what the Williams fans want to see coming into this race. But we all know Williams has the best pit crew in the business, and they'll be able to get the wings changed and get the boys back out on track as soon as possible. A little battle brewing with Rogue uh, down a spot and. Rogue might have wing damage as well. Ooh, it looks back like he in, is missing his his right end plate, so... Back in 10th and just kind of holding people up behind him. And top 3 have a big breakaway, and Seeker is looking awfully racy at the very beginning of this one. Yeah, he's hot on the heels of Bam Bam, and SRS is able to hang on, and... Hopefully SRS can keep within the DRS detection zone range so he's able to keep up with this group as Bam Bam and Seagrest are showing massive pace early in this race. Just hopping on board, we got a little battle in the midfield with Kano, Kit, Kano, Arkaka, and RJP going down into turn 8 here at Circuit Paul Ricard. They've really gapped uh, Bodhod in the top three, of course, Bodhod on the medium tires and just kind of holding his own back and forth. And I think Seekers, once DRS opens up, he'll be trying to pass Bam Bam for the lead here early on. Yeah, I think that's the biggest the biggest key for Seagrass right now is making sure he's maintaining maintaining a, a solid gap to Bam Bam so he can get that DRS as we get around turns five, six, and seven and get into that DRS zone and hopefully get a job get the move done by turn eight. So, 
So I'm not sure if you have this glitch, but it looks like P-Dog is a lap down, so I'm not sure if there's a connection issue or... If yeah, I'm not sure if he's if he's not in the car and it's the AI. Yeah. Or what, but... Comes Arkaka making a move on the other Red Bull RJP for fifth. Makes it safely with the help of the DRS, and now... Got Kano and Kitten Petter all the way up to eighth. Yeah, this is a nice little battle brewing here, here we in, go. in the midfield for Here we go, Seegers for the lead. No. Tried to make it stick. I believe into turn 10 or 11 and didn't have the room for it. We'll see if he can get the job done as we come on to the start-finish straight here. But unfortunately, I, I Bam Bam's on the stream. got a, a lot of cornering speed as well. Seegers tends to get down the straight at the very end especially and he's should have it here plenty of ERS and DRS Bam Bam gonna try to defend in the one takes the outside and Seegers will just follow behind the racing point RJP has just been overtaken by Kano going into turn one and two so Kano slowly working his way up the field We've got a nice little battle brewing here for P6. But I'm going to hop back on board with the Ferrari of Seagrist as he is looking to make a move on Bam Bam. Okay. I did jump on I did jump on board of Pedal. I don't think he made it into his car before the race started, oh. so that is his AI. That's unfortunate for him. Yeah, Seagrass went to take a look there at turn eight, but he he thought better of it. It looks like he's just gonna play the wait, play the waiting game and try again. And the next the next up is Rogue A Wing takes a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. I believe that's our first penalty uh -huh. as well. Looks like we got RJP getting overtaken. Oh, RJP's going wheel to wheel here a little bit with Andrew. So good little battle brewing for P8. here back on board to Seagrest start finish straight again as they cross the line and he sticks his his, his nose inside here and it looks like he's just gets the job done that's a good move by Seagrest doing it on the uh, apex of turn one and getting a great exit holding off in that turn two and Bam Bam's a little bit low on ERS at this point so he's got a Use the DRS to build that ERS back up. And he also might have to defend from ARAM, who's now in third and looking to keep uh, in DRS of the top two. Yeah, I think if if SRS can can main can keep up to the to the leaders here, he's got a good shot shot to capitalize on them as they keep battling out as we go round and round. Oh, porridge and RJP are wheel to wheel at the moment going into turn eight as Porridge gets the job done. Nice move for him. That's a good start from Porridge on those hard tires as well as Kitten up to seventh. Yeah. Um, we did see a little back further in the pack. I think Rogue, iFunner, and HS Marrera. Rogue and HS Marrera went on the hards and they're going to try to make the hards last about 22 laps which is an awfully long time and an awfully long ask even for the hard compound. Yeah, they might even they might even try to pit kind of closer midway through the race, maybe like lap lap 17, maybe even a little bit sooner than that, and they'll go on to the mediums. Maybe I that I can see that being a possibility for them too. But if they try to stretch that 20 laps or 22 laps, that'll be uh, a tough a tough tough ass. Oh, sorry, they just went on to those hards. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Oh, you're good. Uh, also, nobody comes in this lap as well, so one thing for sure is the soft guys still seem to be pulling away from Bot Hot and Fourth, so right now, at least initially, those medium tires aren't really helping him uh, catch back up, if you will. Especially with these guys all in DRS, not really battling. Uh, just looking in the here chat. Comes here Bam quick. Bam. Oh, Bam Bam. Nope, thought about it. We'll get Decided against him. it. 
looking on the chat here quick uh arbor you are right it looks like the weather is just like the eu2 race this afternoon for us some for us over across the pond um well, we've got a safety car uh oh at the last Ooh, turn yes. hs morera lost it on those cold hard oh. tires and now it's going to be bad news for the medium runners great news for the soft runners is they'll have a free pit stop yep Yeah, great, great timing, great timing for for a pit stop here for the soft runners. Is the majority of those guys on the softs are probably on the end of their life of their tires. They're getting close to it, so always, always nice when you get the safety car to save. It's gonna the day. be busy. It is gonna be busy here. Yes, hopefully, it's gonna be an overcast race by the looks of it, and we weren't getting any indications of rain, so hopefully it stays that way. Obadha is gonna jump in as well. On the medium, so he's going to get off the medium tires, and it's going to be a discussion of strategy. Do you go on the hards and try to go the rest of the way? Yeah, it looks like he's Bam Bam is on, on the softs hards. again. Yeah, Bodhat has opted for the hards. Oh. Seeger's on the mediums. Interesting. Bam Bam comes out on the softs. Wow, so he'll have to pit again. Yeah. Bodhat will try to make the hards work, and that's definitely a variety of different uh different strategies gonna play out yeah i uh i did a practice race yesterday and i found the soft to hard is doable but the hard to the front left it really takes a beating so it'll be interesting to see if bothead can manage his tires and we'll be able to stretch those to the end but i think he should be able to take those 20 laps so the top four stay out kitten kano Porridge and rum fresh, and then it's going to be basically the leaders uh, reset. In fact, I think Bodhad gained a spot uh, on SRS Aram. Oh, Amram. SRS had to avoid it. Arcaca seemed to be going a little bit slower than he anticipated there, and had to take some evasive action. That could have been ugly. Yeah, they've caught up to the safety car, so there should be. Uh, should not be yeah so hopefully the guys at the back here can issues. catch up yeah hopefully the guys at the back can catch up to that safety car queue here soon kittens trying to draft with the safety car like it's an indy car save every bit of fuel i guess he can try to looking at the uh looking at the telemetry he actually has quite a lot of fuel left uh, so he'll be have a lot to burn off down the back straight and be able to save some of his ers but yeah. Yeah, so I think it's going to be Kitten on the older hards versus Kano on the older mediums with Porridge right there and Rump Fresh. This will be an interesting restart once we go racing again. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost P Dog. I guess maybe he was here, but having some connection issues or something, but. Gonna be awfully careful to see what happens uh, with the, you know, you've got this top four. We see this a lot as well. Uh, they stay out. You're gonna have the quicker guys, fresher tires behind them, jostling to try to get past. And I guess we'll see how well the top four can manage on their older tires. Obviously, I don't think the mediums, the mediums and the hards really both should have a decent amount of life on them. But I'm looking specifically at Bam Bam on the soft tires. He's gonna have by far the best tires in the top 10 and we'll see how well uh, he can move up although he's got to be able to gap himself to make another stop you think Seeger probably has to stop again as well on the mediums yeah I'd be very shocked if Seeger stretches those mediums to the end but we'll see maybe he's counting on some wild things to happen in the race still but or else he's just a wizard with his tires but we'll see moving forward here as they've got 19 laps to go yeah, this is definitely a blessing though uh, for iPhoneer and for cream media those guys that in the back had to change their wing I think Google Google did as well so even though they are in the back still they get a chance to make up a lot of time on the field and sometimes uh, restarts breed more safety cars and more restarts so uh, <laughs> things could get pretty wild in the turn one yeah, they very well could be, so hopefully the drivers are keeping an eye out for ever, for each other and we have clean t turn one. 
as the safety car has indicated it's coming in this lap. So we're getting ready to go racing as I flip on over to the lead driver, Kitten Petter, waiting for that safety car to roll into the pit lane. We've got the top two both on comms and AM1 and then P7 obviously for Bothod, so maybe that's a good omen for us tomorrow, Verzi. Yep. <laughs> Commentators are showing up strong. So hopefully, hopefully we can continue the success tomorrow night. And Kitten got really close to the safety car going into the pits, and we'll see how he does. He gets a pretty good exit off the last turn. Yeah, and a... he is going. We'll see. We'll, ho we'll hop back through the field a little bit because it's looking pretty clean. And we'll... So far, looking good. Coming through turn one. Battle back for ninth. Andrew up a spot on the soft tires. Yeah, think... already all over the back of Rum Fresh. No DRS yet, though, down a back stretch. So we've got a spinner. It's Arkaka in the background. Digus will take fourth. That was a nice, nice move by Seagrass to get fourth back, and now he can hunt down Porridge Power and build his gap to our to Bam Bam. But Bam Bam's right on his heels here, so Bam Bam was also able to get around Rum Fresh. Looks like. Be interesting to see this battle unfold with Bam Bam being on that softer compound. I, I wonder, I wonder how that's gonna play into Seagrass's plan here as as we move forward in this race. Also, really depends if they can at all. If Forge, uh, let's see, Forge isn't gonna really defend. So Seagrass is by, and Bam Bam is by as well. Looks like Bothod's putting the pressure on Rum Fresh here. Yeah, especially those medium tires at this point. Uh... Oh! Oh! Andrew sees sees a door and decides to slam it open. <laughs> He's up two spots and trying to work past Bothod on the hards. Sends it pretty late, and he'll get the spot. I think Bothod. Actually, no. Bothod does a good job defending. Oh, Seagrass is coming up hot on the heels of Kano, so I'm just going to flip over there quick. Oh boy, this is a difficult move down the inside. He's got to leave space on the exit. He does. Oh, and Bam Bam tries to follow Seagrass through, and Kano. Let's the see it go for third. Well, that was that could have been could have been ugly oh. for the racing point duo. Oh, and we've, we've had an incident with Bod Hot, I think. Uh oh. In contact with either Rum Fresh or Andrew, one of the two, is now they battle for sixth. But Bod Hot down to eleventh now. Bummer. Unfortunate for Bod Hot there, who was having a good run, but he's playing the long game so he might be able to make up those positions later in the race. Seagrass is already on the back of Kitten. Took only about two, working up three laps. Yeah, that looks like the, the fresher, softer compound of tire is coming into play here. Is the We got a beautiful view from our helicopter cam. Oh. And closes that gap in no time at all. Seagrass gets that move done before the braking zone even. So great job. Great job getting the job D done. DRS is super powerful and definitely helps Seagrass quite a bit there. I wonder if Seagrass uh, is running a similar setup to the previous couple tracks where he likes to run a lower downforce compared to a lot of the other drivers and it's helping him out in the DRS zones. 
Just that little bit more. Oh, getting still playing aggressive with those hard tires aren't going to give him much grip in turn 11. Uh, yeah, I think um, this track especially is one of those interesting tracks. I've been trying a few setups, and one of them that I've been running is actually a pretty low rear wing, lower rear wing than the front wing. But um, it definitely has the advantage, I think, especially on fracture tires like Seegers has. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But I think, obviously, the higher downforce setup works well. I think is able to keep the tires more balanced during a during a uh, race. Yeah, absolutely. Was Bam Bam. Oh, Bam Bam gets the job done, and Andrew gets the job done on Porridge. So now the. The top two lead the leaders, Seagrass and Bam Bam, can really start to build their gap. Is although they do have to stop again, so I think they really got to put pedal to the metal here now that they have clean air. Because if if they have to stop still, but SRS can run those hards right to the end, that's going to be an interesting, interesting little battle near the end of this race. I think for sure Bam Bam has to stop. I could see Seagrass maybe trying to stretch it. It would be difficult. Uh, and there's no guarantee. I think that's gets in about 50-50 chance to get a puncture or not. But yeah. um, well, we know definitely Bam Bam will have to. And now Andrew past Kano for fourth. He'll have to stop again as well. But he's made a lot of ground up for being on those tires. Oh, looks like Rogue made a move on I Funner and in that same turn eight and nine section. Oh, we have a yellow flag as it looks like I Funner ended up losing control coming out of that corner. Out of uh, turn nine there, unfortunately for him. So, unfortunate luck spinning out. Poor I'll we'll see how much ground this uh, the leaders can make up. As you see, yeah, Porridge, right there in sixth. You, you've got. I think the next best person for to the leaders is A Ram and the Hards at seventh. He's yeah. losing. Almost about a second a lap to the leaders, maybe a little bit less than a second a lap. But at this rate, these guys will definitely stop and come out behind Aram. But then Amram will have to uh, have to be able to put, I think, a better showing on on the hards later on in the run than what he currently is doing now. Yeah, hopefully those hards kind of start to come alive. I wonder if, with this overcast weather, if the cooler track temperatures are kind of not allowing those tires to warm up as much as he would like early on but maybe as we get going those tires war kick in and he's able to start closing that gap down just a little bit more as as we see the soft and medium tires start to wear out more and more I'm curious to see with Bam Bam already six laps on those softs he's probably going to be looking to pit here in the next couple laps As SRS gets the move done on Kano. And That's like... big for him. He's been kind of behind Kano for a while. And is finally Kano's mediums fell off enough for Amram to get through. Yeah, I think 12 lap old mediums. Kano's probably starting to feel that a little bit on those tires. So... He's probably oh, looking to There pick. goes Kano. There he goes. Right. So we'll look to see him. He'll probably jump onto the He'll probably jump onto the soft or the hard tire, I'd imagine. Finish out the rest of this race. And he's opted for the soft tire, so an interesting call from Kano. So he's gonna go soft soft to finish this race out, so we'll see see what he wants we'll see if he can make up some positions here coming out around p14 so bod Hod's chasing down cream media it looks like he might be able to get the job done going into turn eight as they get drs but it looks like cream was able to get a pretty good run out and he's set good defending from cream media going into turn eight Yeah, Bothod after that spin now has work to do to make it up as Amram goes past Porridge. But uh, I think he's still definitely in this race, uh, considering he figured the top two have to pit. Andrew has to pit. So he's right there, I think, roughly with Amram that can go to the end. And he's about 
like two seconds, two and a half seconds behind Amram, so we'll see how much he can catch up. Yeah, he's only 12, 12 and a half seconds to the leader, so that does play into his favor, but when those guys do inevitably most likely pit again, then they will be able to close some distance on him near the end, so we'll see. So the current fast lap is Andrew with a 132.695. RJP is pitting and he just put on some mediums so it looks like RJP will be finishing the race out on mediums. Lizcano picks up multiple a three second penalty for multiple warnings. Now looks like the closest battle on track between is Bam Bam chasing down Seagrass. So Bam Bam's been able to stretch those softs out for eight laps. I mean, we guess we did have the safety car for a few, so that does help. The thing with me and these guys on the softer compounds is initially, and I mean up to this point, yes, you're going to make a lot of time off, but the pit road is so slow here. Paul Ricard that you lose a ton of time on the pit lane so yeah. I mean I think you know talking right now Bam Bam if he pitted at the moment would be right there with Arcaca and now he, he's in so I mean he's probably going to hop on mediums to the end but I don't know how much ground this is going to gain to you know try to gain close to even get back in the top five Kitten's in as well as Andrew so we put Seagrass out by himself for the time being to see here if Seagrest Seagrest should be able to stretch those tires a couple more laps so hopefully he's able to build his gap more so when he does and maybe he's even able to stretch these tires to the end like you've said so I guess we'll wait and find out but I'd imagine he's going to have to come in for softs right near the end of this race I mean he's got 10 seconds if he can manage 10 seconds and not push I think that's that's really the difference is pushing on those mediums, especially after, you know, maybe another three laps. We'll stop. We'll see him stop gaining time on the rest of these guys. But yeah, we'll see if he can just crawl these mediums to the end. Yeah, it looks like Arcaca is going to be able to get a move done here. Oh, is Bam Bam, who's fresh on fresh mediums, he is getting the jump on Arcaca, so. Look to see, oh, as he sticks his nose out but thinks better of it, so he'll wait, he'll wait and get another run later on. But Bam Bam's putting the pressure on Arcaca and Rogue, saying, get out of my way, I need, I have a podium I need to get, get to, so got to slice through these hard runners. There's quite a few of them on the hards that are, so right now it looks like, so Seagrass might have to pit. If he can stretch those mediums another 10 laps, that'll be very impressive as Porridge comes in on 15 lap old hards. So, SRS, Bodhod, and maybe Google Doogle for the, for the podium here. Yeah, and I think this will be big. I think Bodhod made the right decision, even with the incident he had. Obviously, if he could make those hards last till the end, which I believe he should. Um, he's going to come away with still, I mean, 15 points if, as it runs now. He's 12 seconds up the road from Bam Bam. I don't think Bam Bam will catch him. So, at you know, worst, he stays where he is and still takes home 15 points, which will definitely pad his uh, pad his lead, I think, uh, for at least keep it about where it is. And at the end of the day, uh, that's, that's still a pretty good day. I think he could potentially, you know, if he's... Got only about two seconds to make up to Amram, and then Seegers, obviously, if he has to pit, it could play out in Bodhod's favor, so... Strategies are definitely all over the place. Yeah, and... Matty Robo says that the soft, medium, mediums are the way to go. That all, soft, medium, medium, all day, the only positive thing about this track is there's so many different strats, and that's so true. Is It is kind of fun that you really can change things up and still have still have some success doing it. There's not really a right recipe. As RJP is on the back of iFunner. 
And he's, as he goes wide, <coughs> looking, looking to weave through those signs. All right. Kitten. Right now, a yeah, rogue has got a parade in the back of him. Yeah, so we'll look to see if rogue can hold off our caca and kitten petter, but it looks like Rogue with our Kaka was able to... Oh, around the outside. Wow. Well, that was a sweet move for Kitten. Yeah. Oh, and I think Rogue either hit the back of him or something. Uh... Lost a lot of time. Yeah, interesting. Maybe just ran really wide. Oh. finders into the pits on 12-up old hard, so... Oh, it looks like he's serving a penalty here. And he's opting for the medium tires, so... I'll finish out his race on the mediums. So it's interesting that Seagrest and Amram are on the same, they have the same life on their tires, but it looks like Seagrest has been able to pull out a second gap on Amram for the last couple of laps here. So interesting that he's he's pulling away, but I wonder if Amram's feeling that pressure from Bodod creeping up on him a little bit and forcing him into some mental mistakes maybe. And we're looking at the tire uh, wear at this point for Seagrist, and we talked about that front left uh, does the most, gets the most wear, obviously a clockwise track like this, a lot of uh, hard braking zones, so uh, Seagrist right now is at 49% on his front left tire, 50%, so I mean, that's that's an awfully high number, 50% in the medium with eight laps to go. I think he's got to come in. I mean, you're looking, that's probably at about 80%, you think, in about five or six laps. So yeah, that's that's really pushing it for Seekers. Well, we'll see. Maybe he knows something we don't with, with how he's running his tires. But, I mean, he does have that 12-second gap to second place. So he might he might be best if he pits now. He comes out kind of around the kitten petter bam bam window, so we, he can still have a shot at a podium if he times this up right. Really, I mean, he's still kind of pulled away from bam bam, who's got you know got Google Doogle to get by, which he hasn't done yet. So yeah. I think he's still made up a little bit of time compared to bam bam who pitted. So I guess we'll see. Oh, yes, yes, there he, he's in. Yeah. He must have heard us as he jumps into the pits. He's at 50, yeah, 52 percent. I mean, I think if there was maybe five laps, he could risk it, but it's still eight laps to go. It's, I don't, that's not going to happen. He'll have the sauce. So he should be able to stretch these softs out for seven laps at the end of this race here, no problem. So let's see where he comes out relative to Google Doogle. There we go. Okay. Leaving the pits. All these guys are going to be side by side. Bam Bam gets by. Like he'll be ahead of Bam Bam. So how about that? Staying out in wow. the mediums paid off. And he'll keep a podium spot. And now it'll be a chase. He's got to make up 10 seconds to Amram for the win. I, 10 seconds and 8 laps. I was I was flipping down the order. And I was kind of up. I was in watching on board with Google Doodle expecting... Seagrass to pop out right in front of him and next thing you know Seagrass is was able to squeeze out in front of Bam Bam so great job from the Ferrari pit crew to get that car back out on track in an efficient manner as now he cuts that gap down little by little to Bodhod who is cutting the gap down to SRS and I wonder I wonder how their front left tires are doing on those with those hard tire compounds um, they are both at 45%, so really okay. their wear is not as great as uh, I guess you'd think it would be, but... Yep. They should still be able... I think they'll probably end up around the 60% range, maybe by the time this thing's all done. Maybe it'll be more yeah, 70 Seagrass is... looks like he's already taken about a second off of Amaran. And we'll just continue to melt time away. The thing is, those soft tires will start to disappear, I expect, right around lap 6 or 7. Uh, yep. on that stint, so last two laps might be a challenge. As 
Arakaka has opted to pit, so he's jumping on to softs right near the end here. Maybe he's going to look to get a fast slap or something, but uh, Kano is also pitting. So Kano regretting going on to the softs earlier in the race. He's got to pit again. Unfortunate. Unfortunate strategy for him, for his team there, but let's see here. Maybe he can scoop up a fastest lap and get into the points and make it worthwhile. Man alive, Seagrass is gone from what leaving the pits wow. about nine seconds behind Amram, looking at a 6.1 gap to Amram already. I mean, he is just definitely the fastest on track. I think he's been the fastest all day, and that'll just uh, really, really cement this win if he can catch him. I mean. This should be the fastest lap by a long margin. How's the penalty situation in the top three? So I live. This one. Um, checking. Yeah. Wow, Seagrass has already cut that gap down even more. He's 2.8 to Bodhod, who is 1.5 to Amram. So this is going to be a wild finish. And Bam Bam yeah, they... only Bam Bam's only four four seconds off of Seagrass, so maybe he can close up as the top three battle it out here in the, in the final stages of the French Grand Prix. They're yeah, looking at the top four. There are no penalties to be had. I was looking for it on the telemetry, couldn't find it. That's because there aren't any penalties for these guys. Oh, so wow. this is what plays out on track up to this point is how it will play out as they cross the line, which is something that we haven't had the fortune to say in quite a while, but obviously it will play out. And I think Bodha's starting to catch Amram just a tad. He's got it within two seconds, but I mean he's got Seagrass now right behind him, a second behind, so Yeah, this is gonna be a fun finish. Uh, it's gonna be gonna be exciting. AM2 never ceases to disappoint with exciting finishes, and here's another one that's gonna be a, a great finish. So oh, buckle in because it's gonna be a fun five laps as Kitten Petter hunts down Google Dougal. So we'll see if Kitten can get the job done and get into P5. A Seagrass is already on the heels of Bodhod here, and we haven't even gotten to the front straight yet. Oh, Amram picks Except up a three-second penalty. That's huge. Oh, that is huge oh, now because that no. means this is basically the battle for the lead. All right. Bodhod's are... got nothing for Seagrass. No, Bodhod was out at ERS, and so Seagrass gets the job done effortlessly, and he's going to hunt down the leader. And as Bodhod also gets a three-second penalty. Oh, man. Can Bodhod stay within DRS for Seegers though and help him pull closer to Amram here? Yeah, I think that's I'm not sure. I think that's the thing. It seems now. like Bodhod's really struggling and I'm sure yeah. Amram is as well as the hard hard tires are dead. Hop on board with the leader. This Seagrest hunts him down. Oh man. Yeah, this is uh Seagrest smells the blood in the water here and Amram's just Trying to get that car around the track a couple more times, but Seagrass on those fresh softs is just, there's no match for the old. Amram as well, 59% um, hard tire, so, I mean, if he gets past, then he's got to worry about just getting to the end because, I mean, those tires are <laughs> really on the verge of just collapsing. Interesting. He's got... Bam Bam as well, not terribly far away from Bodhot, but these hard runners will just really fall off if they can make it. Oh, Rum Fresh overtakes RJP and runs wide. Alright, we're hopping on board with Seagrest here. Oh, he is putting the pressure on the Renault right now. Making him defend, use up those tires even more. Yeah. He's got DRS in the back stretch. Amram has been able to save his ERS, but he should be all for not. Although Seagrass 
it was starting to slow down those soft are starting to wear a little bit more as seagrass gets the job done well before the braking zone so now Bodhod, who's two seconds off of SRS, he needs to close that gap down. Well, he needs to maintain this gap, actually. And then he'll be able to get P2. But I wonder if he's dealing with the same issues SRS is, where he's he's nursing those tires, trying to just get it, get across that checker flag as, as we've got three more laps to go here. As... RJP and Rumfresh are going wheel to wheel into turn eight. Oh. There we go. Yeah, so Seagrass pole position, fastest lap, and leading the race. No penalties as well. As Rumfresh gets past RJP, but this looks like a pretty good battle for for the final point position. Arcaka as well is right there. there too. So, oh, as Arcaka takes advantage of the mistake. Tires. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's a tough move around the outside. That was a tough move. Oh, oh, oh dear. RJP made some contact, and now. See how well can Rumfresh defend? Running out of time in the race. Arcaka will go to the outside and Rumfresh defends well. Here comes Ar a good run. Arcaka's kind of a similar situation to Seagrass where he's just on the way faster tire, so it's just a matter of when, not if, that he gets this move done on Rumfresh to get that final point position. As Kano is into the pits again, oh no, I wonder if he's on the, another set of softs. I wonder if something happened there. Maybe he's just going to try to take the fastest lap away yeah, from Seagrass. Maybe. But I'm not sure he'll be able to. Seagrass just set, I mean, an incredible time of 132.7 in race pace, so. Yeah, that's that's a very quick time, so. Seagrass is, is a mean driving like a madman out there in a mean machine, so. As he's got one more lap to go. Or sorry, my bad. Two more laps to go. It looks like those hards will make it. If anybody gets a puncture, it'll be Amram at 68% hards, um, followed by Bothod at 65%, but they tend to be doing a little bit better near the end. Crazy. Well, Bothod needs to be careful here, because I think Bothod's going to end up P3 anyways, because now Bam Bam is within three seconds, so I don't think Bam Bam has any penalties, but I could be wrong. I don't. I just did not think he had one as well. Yeah. Right on board, or look at the points as they run. Of course, this is before uh, you know if any penalties get assessed. But you've got Seegers at the, this moment with 67 points, Watt hot at 74, but that's with him in third. Obviously, if he drops a place, he'll be at 71, and then if Bam Bam can make the move, he'll be at 67 as well. So it'll be. What, Seagrass and Bam Bam with a tie in points, and just like both of them about six points behind Bothod. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be a fun three way fight here, it looks like, for, as we continue on. But Arcaka is is pushing the pace here, trying to trying to get Rogue A Wing, is, but I, I, I'm not sure if he'll be able to do it as it looks like he's starting to drop back a little bit and I wonder if those softs because he was pushing so hard or I wonder if those softs for our cock are starting to, to peter out a little bit Ooh, Andrew Andrew make looks to make a move on his teammate we'll see if if multi 21 is issued or if if they can hold position and go around the track one more time but I think he's going to look to get the move done on his teammate. I think Bam Bam is just within the three-second range as well, so he might steal third. Yeah. going to come down to the very finish, though. So. 
looks like Andrew is oh he's he's opted oh no I think Andrew is getting the move done at going into turn eight and he, oh and he does a risky business but he gets the miss job his done. breaking point yeah uh, oh our Kaka has closed that gap down so we'll see with DRS here if defend. he can get the job done Around the outside, tough move, but nice now move. the DRS has the move done into the turn. Rogue looked like he might have tried to force it, but... As Seagrass rounds the final corner, coming down the start, finish straight, he is the winner of the AM2 Season 3. And it looks like the order is... SRS and then Bam Bam, so... Wow. About how loses out by about half a second. I'm, wow, that was a tight finish. Tight, tight finish. So we'll see is Rum Fresh Rogue. Arkaka coming across the line. Rogue's going to probably hang on for that final point position, but overall that was Porridge, a really fun race. Uh, Porridge jumped a spot with a Google Diggle penalty, so oh. up to 7th. Arkaka that will take ninth. Nice. Ooh, Rogue and Rumfresh really close at the finish, but wow, yeah. I mean, that's some solid points for the Renault dri or for the McLaren drivers. And a solid showing from our fellow American commentators as Kano comes around the final couple corners here to close out the. AM2 French Grand Prix. I'm really happy for Seegers. You know, we talked about it before the race. He came so close a couple of rounds before and I think just flat out dominated. Uh, the game's going to give Driver of the Day the kitten, obviously, I think moved up the most spots, but uh, yeah, Seegers just flat out domination, even had the extra pit stop to work with and had uh, plenty of time to catch the one stoppers. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, like you said, it was pure domination start to finish for Seagrass. Like, he is a man on a mission and he has some serious pace. So, he's making life difficult for the other drivers in AM2. But, congratulations to him on another fantastic win. All right. So Seagrass followed by SRS, Bam Bam, then Bodhod, Kitten, Andrew, Porridge, Google Doogle, Arkaka, Rogue Wing, Rum Fresh, Cream Media, RJP, Kano, iFunner, and P Dog and HS Maria were unable to finish the race. So overall, a solid, solid fun race as we get ready to gear up for interviews if you want to invite the drivers uh, I suggested oh, them shoot. Sure, sure love you. okay I will uh, pop on over and go set that up All right, you good to go, Podium? To make sure everybody's audio is set to share, yeah, but other than that, should be good. Should be good, hold on. Yeah. 
I can't hear uh, it, but I'm sure it's good. Right. <laughs> Always allow. Okay, we're good. Alright, uh, we'll start with podium interviews. Uh, we'll look at P3 Bam Bam. Obviously, another solid performance from you. Uh, you and Seegers uh, seem to be uh, nip and tuck at the start, but obviously, Seegers tried something a little bit different uh, strategy wise, and um, you still pulled out, uh, able to catch Bot Hot, and got him on penalties for P3. Uh, tell us from your perspective what were your expectations for Paul Ricard today? Oh, well, actually, I'm like pretty upset because. Uh, my strategy was actually the soft to hard, but it got messed up in the pit strategy in the pit lane somehow. So, yeah, they went to the soft, soft, medium, and yeah, I'm pretty bummed out right now. So, <laughs> sorry. Oh well, you still still had a pretty good day. Obviously, you had to battle hard and race your way back through uh, through the pack a little bit in that closing ending moments, but. Obviously, uh, even with the poor strategy, you can't be too upset with it still grabbing 15 points away. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, congratulations, and well, hopefully your team, uh, your picker, can get the tires uh, right for next next Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks. All right. We'll move on to SRS Amram, who had the lead for a long time, but obviously Seagrist on the fresh softs. Uh, were too much to handle. Obviously, you did a great job though to make those hard last 20 laps. Uh, I think they were, from a telemetry standpoint, they were well over, I think, 60% near the end. So, uh, tell us how did you get those hards to last? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I was initially in the in the strategy window. It said soft, medium, medium. I couldn't choose to do soft, hard. So, it, one of the first things I did when I started the race, I just clicked out over to hard as soon as the start was done. Um, I was supposed to. I wanted to pit on like lap eight or nine. And they're in driving them out from there. Hopefully, get like you know 19 or so laps. But the safety car came, safety car came out on six, and I I kind of just was like screw it. I'll lose I'll lose less time here. I might you know I might hold a couple positions more than I would have. So I went for it. Um, I kind of for the first few laps after the safety car dropped off, uh, I drove I drove I drove those tires to the limit. Uh, I just wanted to try and gain back any time and get myself up to speed with everybody else and you know use that initial strength of the tires. To, to keep myself ahead instead of trying to save them for later because I didn't know if I could overtake. Um, but nearing the end, there was like, you know, lap 17, 18, 10 laps to go. I kept uh, like every lap on the back straight. I would always be clicking over into the tire wear menu trying to look like, like, will I make it to the end? Will my tires make it? Do I have enough life left? And luckily enough, I was able to make, when they were 55, 60, I was still able to find decent pace on it and I was able to stay ahead of uh, Seagrass for a little bit, but he got ahead of me eventually because of the new softs. But... Uh, I was able to stay ahead of the other guys and uh, bring home P2. Yeah, but uh, a great result nevertheless. Uh, obviously, uh, a tough position near the end, but um, you did what it took. You got a solid P2 finish, and uh, yeah. I congratulate you on that and uh, get ready for next week. Yeah, congrats to Seagrass. He, he was great today. Thanks, man. Yeah, Seagrass, uh, we talked to, I talked a little bit about it on the stream, uh, moving on to the winner, and you know, you had the tough penalty last week against Italy. It took you out of contention. And I was I was thinking, you know, especially after watching your qualifying, you had, I think, five-tenths uh, the gap to P2 in qualifying. It was, okay, this is Seagrass' race. As long as nothing bad happens to him, he should uh, he should have things in hand. And we thought something might have bad happened uh, with you going an extra stop, but obviously those soft tires were dominant at the end. Yeah, yeah. Feels pretty good after that little mistake I made going into a corner and VSC went green on me in, uh, last week by .055 seconds. I got a drive through, so that, that hurt. But uh, yeah, it feels good to come back and get the win today. But uh, I actually, last minute decision today, I was kind of thinking about going medium hard. Then I seen how many people qualified on the softs. So I went ahead and qualified on the softs. And, uh, and then I was even thinking soft to hard about the start of the race and then I made a last second change to go soft medium soft so I'm kind of glad I glad I changed my mind there at the last minute well you had uh, a, a great decision I think uh, especially near the end um, with the soft going to the softs when you did uh, didn't run out of time gave you plenty of time to catch the leaders and eventually uh, win the race I, I one thing that I personally I you know doing practice struggling with grip for France, so you seem to have plenty of grip and also plenty of straight line speed. Is this a race where you attacked uh, the high uh, high traction 
high G G force uh, turns, or was it one where you focused mostly on the straight line speed? Uh, I really felt like I had a pretty good mix of both, decent enough speed, but the car still felt real good through the corners. So had a pretty good setup going. All right. Well, you seem to be the fastest one throughout, and you got P1 at fastest lap and qualified first. Uh, so congratulations with that. And uh, puts you right back in the contention for the points along with uh, Bam Bam and Bodhod. So should be, I think, the way things have gone for four races through uh, should get more interesting as the season goes on. Congratulations. Right on. Appreciate it. All right. Um, perfect job, you three. We'll turn it over to Bursey to wrap things up. Absolutely. Yeah, great job, guys. Congratulations to all three of you. Uh, just a reminder to all of our viewers, you can catch European 3 on Monday at 10 p.m. UK time. EU2 precedes us uh, Tuesdays at 10 p.m. UK time. And then tomorrow on Wednesdays, you can find our the big boys, European 1 at 10 p.m. UK time. And, and then our brand new European Tier 4 is Thursdays at 10 p.m. UK time as well. And our American Tiers, we run 9 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. And you can catch Perry and myself driving tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard time. Um, and then you can also hear the lovely voices of Bod Hod, Kitten Petter, and Kano J. Loft doing comms for us. So yes, it'll be great. Remember to subscribe, gift gift subs when you can, and thank you for so much for tuning in this evening. Have a great night.